Hello, hi. If you enjoy anything in this video, you should consider the following. Subscribe to me here on YouTube, follow me on Twitch, and on TikTok, where I make other forms of content and where I post my other content. All right, cool, enjoy the video. I was sent a video, video is on screen, of uh, someone discussing why they dropped these eight, which I, I cannot fathom why anyone would drop this game because dropping a game has like a very severe uh connotation to it and for like full transparency and full clarity or whatever i have played these eight literally eight times from start to finish got every ending did everything possible in the game blah blah blah, blah. obviously the game is good to me and several other people but, uh, when the video got sent to me, I was like, what? I initially was like, what the fuck is this? And then, because of how curious I am, uh, I immediately went to start reading some of the comments on. I was like, you know what? Nope, 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 not going to do that. But then I saw a comment left from the person who sent me the video. And I know that if they're leaving comments on something, it's either really, really good, or it's really, really bad. So, um, with that out of the way, I'm gonna try, key word is try, um, not to be like Giga Ultra Bias, because as I said, I've completed this game eight times. So, uh, yeah, here we go. I heard why Zay Lacrimosa of Donna was a classic to some people. Yes, it is. <laughs> like, not even... Uh, fuck, it's not even five seconds and I've already paused it. Uh, Yeast 8 is a lot of people's, like, first Yeast game, period. And, well, yeah, it's a good class. C class, because now we get Yeast games all the fucking time, anyway. And I'd like to give my thoughts and criticisms on it after some hours of playing it. As you can tell by the title, there's a bit more to it than that. First playing wise, it, it introduced to you many systems and pages jammed into each other without slowly explaining them through gameplay. Um, the point of it being introduced this way because it's like, hey, these buttons do these things and you're eventually going to find out what they do as you play the game. Because like, there is a thing that you can turn off, by the way, uh, that tells you, like, oh, hey, press this and that to get past this and that, you know? Plus, like, it's a game. It's supposed to tell you what all the buttons do and then gradually explain to you and show to you what the buttons do. I don't really get this as a point, but whatever. But before I get all into that, you begin on a ship working patrol to pay off your fine of being on the ship. I'd prefer to skip this part since the pacing is terrible with you having to walk back and forth as a patrol and having oddly long cutscenes and dialogue sequences. You work on the- huh? You work on the ship. Your role on the ship is basically security. Why wouldn't you go talk to the passengers and make sure that they're all right? I don't... I don't understand this. Wait, hold on, wait, wait. Patrol, and having odd pacing is terrible, with you having to walk back and forth as a patrol, and having oddly long cutscenes and dialogue sequences. That is literally at all job on the ship, what? Bro, that... <laughs> that... That's literally his job at that moment in time. What? That's what you're told to do. Okay. Okay. All right. It just feels so strange. I can't tell if it's the lack of but still present facial animations or if it's just because the cutscene-esque look of things while barely using any sort of cinematic cuts and without voice acting is throwing me off. Uh, the game was originally released on the Vita. Falcom is still a small company. The team that works on Yeast is smaller than the Trails team, and voice acting costs money. A lot of money. So, like, um, 
you know, I want to say, or no, I want to ask if this individual has ever played a JRPG before, but looking at this right here, which is crazy, uh, at least shows to me that he has played JRPGs before, but Jesus Christ, what a, that's, that's a take, that's a take, all right. Anyways, your ship crashes, and you end up stranded having to pick up new teammates. The ship gets attacked, but alright. And people who you aid in the journey. The most notable one that you pick up is your first, which doesn't set the best tone for the rest of the game. Here's why. Okay, wait. Before, bef before this, like, even continues... You are aware that Adol literally, like, turns his head, closes his eyes, and, like, contextually, right, in the scene, she was holding her towel with one hand, weapon in the other hand, and if you're gonna, like, throw hands with someone, naturally something's gonna give. So, like, how is this not... Setting the tone properly? <laughs> to go over combat, you'll notice it's like Dark Souls. Ha! No, stop. Stop. <laughs> no. No. <laughs> no, no, no. <laughs> no, absolutely. There's no way. There's, there's, uh, there's no way. He really said that. Okay. <laughs> no. Actually, it's more like a fast-paced hack and flash. That's exactly what it is. Is it's it, it it? What do you mean, Dark Souls, bro? What? No. This is literally an action hack and slash. That, that's what the yeast games have always been, minus the first couple on the PC-98. But that's what yeast has always been, bro. What? But enemies do have a set attack sequence, and your role isn't half bad. You can always switch characters to do enemy weaknesses, which breaks them for more damage. For example, slash can break soft enemies, while pierce aerial enemies, and strike armored enemies. Combat, a lot of the times, has the problem that Dark Souls has, which- Why do you keep com- Okay, this is, what, the second or third time he's compared it to Dark Souls? Why are you comparing an extremely fast, almost hyper-speed level game to Dark Souls? Ah, hmm. Oh boy. Which is sometimes getting one hidden will win you the encounter. Especially if you're an anime guy, what? sometimes on. getting one hidden, a lot of the times, has the problem that Dark Souls has. Which is sometimes getting one hidden will win you the encounter. Getting one hit in will win you the encounter? No. As Dark Souls doesn't work like that, and neither does Yeast 8 work like that. What do you, you see in the... Has. Unless, okay, okay, unless I am misunderstanding what he means by one hit will... When you the encounter, you literally see in the footage right here that he has to hit the thing Which one, is sometimes two, three, three times to kill one. And okay, I don't understand what this means. Getting one hidden will win you the encounter, especially if you're an anime guy who can use a bunch of easily reloadable skills and spam attacks. If on a limited resource that has to be rebuilt back up, but sure. If you charge enough by attacking, you can use the super move. After waiting a bit, there's also a mechanic that lets you charge your attack move, so now you can save a couple of clicks when making the enemies get out of your way. Another thing to add is that you can do rising attacks while in the air, and attacks while you're lowering. The main reason I bring this up is because it shows how floaty this game is. Floaty? No. 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 No, there's no way. There's no way. Floaty? How? How was this floaty? I don't... 
Your actions have weight to them. When you jump, there's weight to your jump. When you start attacking, you get in like two swings and then you're back to the ground. Does I hope he explains what he means by this. Being in the air for so long just feels strange, even though it's a regular jump. Huh? Making a lot of being in the air for so long just feels strange, even though it's a regular jump. Then why are there attacks that are designed to be used in the air? This doesn't make any sense to me. He taught that he says there's an attack that puts you into the air that then showcases how floaty the game is. But like when you reach the height of your jump or the attack that put you in there, you immediately start falling. He's treat. I'm, I don't know if, if he's played Kingdom Hearts 3, but he's treating this like it's Kingdom Hearts 3 or or oh birth by sleep floatiness but what are you talking about making a lot of jump attacks can punish you easily since you are so slow at landing you might get hit from an enemy attack that isn't even planning to come out yet no okay first of all that sounds like skill issue but no the reason i say you might get hit from an making a lot of jump attacks can punish you easily since you are so slow at landing you might get hit from an enemy attack that isn't even planning to come out so it's either it's either you stay in the air for an uncomfortable amount of time and have that be a problem or you drop like a rock which negates the point of going into the air at all which also negates the air combat as well or you have some kind of in between that works and again again like i've said i have played these eight eight times and not once have i felt like the game was baloney or like it takes too long to hit the ground because naturally if you're going into the air during an action game when you attack a lot of the time, you're not just going to sit there like a dummy. You're going to be swinging midair. So this whole thing about about floatiness just ain't ain't cutting it. It's not. It doesn't make any sense. And he doesn't explain it very well either. Oh, yeah. The reason I say get out of your way for the enemies is because Lacrimosa of Donna seems to want to be speedrun. No. <laughs> no, N nowhere does the game make you f feel like it wants to be speed ran, nor where is this coming from? W genuinely, where is this coming from? Now, I'm trying not to be too uh, uh harsh with the responses because he did say that he played it for a few hours. I don't know how many of those few hours like like actually took place but no this game doesn't make you feel like it wants to be speed ran where is that coming from that's actually how i feel these easy enemies are everywhere and level design is most of the time extremely simple so much so that load times can be extremely close to each other which aid in helping environments not feel real well well okay so I didn't play the original Vita release. I played it on the PS4 first, and then I played it again on my laptop, and like the loading speeds from a a handheld console that compared to a computer, you, you can't really do that in my opinion, but okay. I also hate the fact that literal bunny hopping is faster than sprinting since it gives you a boost. Why is that a problem? I don't... How is that a problem? If anything, that's tech! That... that <laughs> that's tech that you can and should be using to your advantage. But that still doesn't constitute the whole... The game feels like it wants to be speed. Bro, bro is not making any sense. 
like genuinely he's not he's not making any sense bro for real how how man i pretty much have to do this to traverse the map this no you don't that is a that is a lie that is a straight lie you do not have to sprint jump all over the place to get around that's that's just cap bro this way now which i hope i don't have to explain why that feels annoying that's a you that's a you problem dog <laughs> Some map parts at least have chests scattered around them and resources you will need towards your medicine or supplies. And I do think that the fact the game includes fast travel is a needed addition which they gladly have. Boss fights are actually HP sponges. Have you never fought a boss before a day in your life? Are you... He really said boss fights to HP sponges. So like, like, hear me out, right? If boss fights in this are HP sponges, what are boss fights in Dark Souls since, you know, you made that unreasonable comparison to the two? Like, like, if, 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 if boss fights in this are HP sponges, what is a boss fight in literally any other game? Hello? If, if a boss, if the first few boss fights are just HP sponges, would you rather be so ridiculously powerful early on in the game where you just look at them and then they die? Or, or, would you rather them be so aggressive and have so many mechanics that you're like, am I fighting the first boss or am I fighting the final boss? What's happening here? You can't say, no, no. You can't say that. First, first of all, again, skill issue. A severe skill issue. But like... To say that they're HP sponges makes no sense. Because it is a huge, giant monster. And you're three people finding it with literal trash that you find on the shore. So like... No shit is going to take some time to get rid of, but even then, it's not an HP sponge. What are you talking about? And have a couple of easily dodgeable moves. That's... So... I'm going to assume that... Uh... This guy, like, really prefers Souls games? Where they just constantly fling shit at you and have mechanics that if you slip up once you're dead because like it's the early hours of the game of course shit is going to be easy unless you just suck <laughs> so much so that my mom can beat the bosses easily okay bro chill out most of the time in the bosses you will take damage not because they are difficult, but because there is an infinite advantage in healing mid-game instantly like Breath of the Wild and ignoring all of the combat moves the boss has. No. Like, granted, to be fair, yeah, you can heal mid-fight like you can in most other games that have action bosses. But if you rely on that, Number one, you're gonna run out of stuff. Uh, number two, you're not gonna beat any boss past, like, like, chapter f three. Like a speedrun. Oh my god, this, if, he's... I don't understand the speedrun shit. This, this, I'm three minutes and 35 seconds into this video. And I have probably paused it at least ten times already. But so far, this is just a really bad faith argument as to as to why you put the damn game down this shit ain't making no sense you brought up dark souls 
He brought up speed running. He brought up floatiness and having to sprint hop all over the place to get around when none of that is true. The most offensive thing Lacrimosa does is introduce raids, which are waves of enemies that in the first raid at least are painfully easy and extremely slow. It's the... It's the beginning of the goddamn game. It's not a Devil May Cry or a Bayonetta or a, 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 a Metal Gear Rising or a Souls game where it's zero to eight million within the first 90 seconds. Okay, now that the ultra kill status has passed. Um, like, bro, you're at the, st you are literally level 13. This is probably the first, no, this is the first raid in the game. If it was balls to the walls crazy right then and there, it'd have been like, whoa, chill out. The game just started. Let me build up to, man. Especially you having to see how your other raid team performed. I think this addition serves no use and just adds extra seconds to every scene, and it's just really odd. I don't know why you would add that. Uh, no. It's, it, whatever, it's not whatever the fuck he said. Like, you, you know, perform well, your score influences their score. When both of your scores get tallied at the end, you get more shit. The higher your score, the better the shit you get, so it makes sense plus like their 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 raid actions have literal effects on the fight itself you know what you know what you know what you know nope nope just just play the video just to hammer this in i've never felt things moving so slow in dialogue sequences and general explanations of systems while playing any game jesus christ i have not heard a legitimate reason to drop the game all it is is really heavy, bad faith arguments about the game and comparing it to shit that don't make sense. It now often makes me mad sitting through any sort of extra dialogue because of how bad it is. Do you just not like dialogue or something? Like, I'm, I, <laughs> I'm asking the question as if the guy is here in chat right now or whatever, but... <clears throat> do you just not like dialogue or like cutscenes or story or exposition or anything because how else is the game supposed to be told because because on one hand right if you tell the story and talking about a minute everybody has to get the shit out like really really fast you're gonna be like the pacing is horrible Everyone's talking too fast, everything's moving too fast. I can't, I don't have the time to sit down and understand what's happening before me on screen right now. I can't process what's happening right now. I don't know what's happening. Right? But, if you present your story in a way that East is doing, it's a problem because it's too slow and there's not enough cinematic angles and cutscenes and facial animations. What the hell are you talking about? Oh my god, I... Wow, this sucks! <laughs> Games to... I guess so. I, 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 I guess... I guess so. You know, a game about being stranded on an island with monsters and whatever, and having to figure out how to get off of here is too anime, you know? Real people, in the context of the game, real people having real conversations about the situation around them during a time of peace 
and we and well, you don't have to talk and act at you know high octane levels every peak a second. I guess that's a problem somehow. As for characters, though they will contribute to your camp and make differences like repairing and providing medicine, the characters in your party badly interact with each other. Shut the fuck. They, they literally, literally don't, don't know, know each, each other. other. They were passengers on a ship. They didn't know each other going on. They didn't know each other when the ship got mangled. They don't know each other. They gotta work together as strangers to get off. Man. Too much anime show bullshit. Hey, hey, hey. I, I, I'm so hesitant to go through this guy's, like, other videos or whatever just based off this alone because, you know, first impression makes everything, blah, blah, blah. But, again, as I pointed out earlier, this right here, bro? Nah. Nah. This, no. Absolutely not. This, this is, man, look, look. It's not a lot of people that have, like, scathingly horrendous takes about the Sky games, but this, this, nah, dude, that, that's, that's OD, that's OD for real, you say do it, hey, I'll think about that. It's so awkward and sounds forced, which is also paired by the on and off voice acting. Why do you, why are you complaining about the voice that, that costs money, bro? Like, you gotta understand. If you're a voice director, and you have a game that has voice acting, no one has said the game, the whole game has to be voice acted, because it's not a Tales game, for God's sake. Because pretty much all the Tales games, those are voice acted from start to finish, yo. That shit costs money. And if scenes don't have to have, like, actual voices attached to them, then cool. It is what it is. Like, why, why, is, why is this a complaint as to why you dropped a game, bro? Let's get off this island alive! Here. Why is that a problem? I'm really sad in saying all these negatives, since the beginning music and dreams that your main character has will of course lead up to more story plots. That does interest me, but all the other negatives don't give it any favors. Having said that, those are my general thoughts on YZ8 so far. So, subscribe if you want to hear more of my thoughts on games, and see you next time. I don't... like... That was, that was such a dog shit video.